Hello everyone, welcome. Good afternoon to you in the room and online. Thanks very much for joining us at the BTRM Open Evening, Faculty Open Evening. I'll be honest with everyone, I totally mix this idea of other people, the CFA do it, CQF does it. Meet the Faculty Open Evening, we think it's a good way for people to get to know the faculty. Uh, I'll introduce them in a second, what well, part of the faculty, is a small part here. And also, if they have any questions on the program, so Certificate of Bank Treasury Risk Management. Today is the 16th of September. Uh, cohort three, the third cohort of BTRM, kicks off on the 14th of October. So just just under a month's time. Actually, it's precisely four weeks' time from today when the third cohort kicks over. Kicks off. It's a 22-week, sorry, 24-week program. 22 weeks of lectures and the exam in week 24. So we're here to answer your questions, and afterwards, when the live link-up is uh, finished, at least those in the room uh, can carry on chatting with the faculty. Those online, hopefully if you have further questions, post them on the website, or indeed uh, on the LinkedIn group, actually. If you're not a member, get in touch, and we'll extend the invite to you. There's a BTRM group on LinkedIn. Right, so let's kick off. Welcome. My name is Morad Chowdhury. Uh, on my left is Dr. Ed Bass, and on my right is Peter Eisenhardt both close personal friends of mine of long standing, but also coincidentally, not coincidentally, members of the faculty of BTRM. So they, alongside myself, will lecture on various parts of the program. They have, we each have our own individual specialties or specialisms, if you like. And if you look at the brochure, which is online, it's on uh, btrm.org. If you look at the brochure and also indeed um, just the, the general program that's on the website, so you'll see the faculty details. There's, we have a distinguished faculty. Uh, I'm very very privileged to be working with them. Uh, I know them all personally a very long time, and it's the whole universe of, of bank balance sheet risk there in that faculty. So if you have a look there, with just three of us here today, there's about uh, 10 odd at least, <laughs> memory serves me right, on the faculty, and we all share out parts of the BTRM program that are relevant to our background. Okay, so that's the intro. I will kick off and ask if there's any questions. If there aren't, I will ask the faculty members to introduce themselves and also talk about the program. Um, from their own personal perspectives. Before we do that, anything either in the room or online, anyone have any questions on the program itself and the next cohort? Hey, Werner, anything from you? Not so far. Okay, right. Let me uh, then hand over just for the next couple of minutes to talk uh, to Ed and to Peter to just talk about their own personal perspectives of the program and why they think it's... Uh, a jolly good way to spend a Wednesday evening, uh, either online or in London on a cold winter's evening in February. Ed, please, what do you think of BTRM? Can I kick off? Yes, please. Yes. Well, I'm privileged to be part of the faculty in this initiative, which I think is great. And this has been echoed by the students as well, who have gotten a, a great deal out of it um, in helping to develop their knowledge around treasury uh, in banks and uh, further their careers. Uh, my own uh, personal special Special is more on the uh, bank capital management front with on credit rating agencies as well. I spent five years at Standard & Poor's as a credit ratings analyst, also covering of banks. And I also contribute a little to uh, liquidity yield curve, uh, those kinds of topics. But um, I found it very enriching from a, a personal perspective. The content, I think, is, is excellent. As more I'd said, we have a number of distinguished uh, contributors to this initiative. Uh, Morad's own textbook, Principles of Banking, is an invaluable uh, component of the overall uh, offering. And uh, I've gotten a great deal out of it. Uh, and I'm, I believe the, the students that we've had so far, uh, two cohorts uh, going to three, has been uh, very positive. Thank you. Thanks very much. Um, and am I right, Mr. Eisenhaus, your own thoughts on the program? Yeah, I think um, we're all in this together in that um, we have a range of um, faculty and we have a range of participants and the big thing is that everything keeps changing all the time. I've, I've been working um, in part on the bit about capital market issuance and it's just interesting to um, pick up the paper and see that this whole, for example, um, uh, craze of cocos <laughs> and senior issuance um, may in fact not make any difference because the buy-in rules may essentially turn everything into cocoa and make <laughs> even the most senior bondholder um, subject to some kind of haircut or loss if things go wrong. So um, I think it's important to look at uh, technique and technical aspects of the market, but just always to stay on top of why you do things, why regulations change. 
uh, what the LCR means and the NSFR and, and how that's changing and how that's being implemented and how that's being seen um, at, at different banks. Uh, so I, I think it's a constant dialogue, BTRM, and I think we should keep it that way. Excellent. Thank you, gentlemen. Thanks very much. Uh, just in case uh, those of you, some of you weren't so sure about that, uh, Coco is, of course, contingent convertible <laughs> uh, and not something else. Uh, but, of course, acronyms, we can't avoid them in, this, in, this, in the financial industry. So we, we try and minimize their use on BTRM, but we can't get away with them. NSFR and LCR, of course, are, are bread and butter to everyone nowadays in, in the industry. So, and thank you to uh, Dr. Bass for the very kind words on my text. <laughs> That's not why I got him in. <laughs> right, okay, so the program itself, uh, it's designed, it can be taken from anywhere around the world. Obviously, that uh, if you're in London, you, get, you have the option to physically attend the lectures. Uh, if you're online, you can dial in and watch them log on and watch them live, or indeed, of course, watch the recording afterwards. Uh, designed to be taken anywhere around the world and also be taken from existing practitioners. The point is one doesn't stop one's, um, hello, one doesn't stop one's um, own day job to take it. It's a, it's a part-time, it's kind of that traditional evening study uh, model, but of course, evenings, daytimes, weekends, whatever suits the individual student. It's, it is deliberately aimed to be very practitioner orientated. There's very little one of the motivations that I personally had of it, I mean, the BTRM was an idea I'd had. I first approached a university, which shall remain nameless. I approached the university in 2004 with a concept, believe it or not, that was very similar to this. And um, it, uh, pre crash people written, weren't really fussed about treasury and liquidity risk and capital management. Uh, post crash, of course, uh, it's a de rigueur for everyone in finance. Um, but one of the things that was very important to me, I found when I was uh, in the market as a junior, was it when if one wanted to get any formal learning about it, you, you opened the textbook, it was, it was full of theory. Um, I, I personally have a quantitative background, so you know, a book full of uh, equations doesn't bother me, but it's not accessible. But more to the point, it's not necessarily that practical. It's not actually the way one does things on a desk, whether you're the head of liquidity or doing funds transfer pricing or indeed doing collateral management at a bank or a myriad of other things. So, the point of the BTRM is to be practical, is to be up to date what banks are currently doing. Not all banks, what we consider to be best in class or best practice banks. What are people, what are people who are within the balance sheet risk management space doing for real and what should we be doing? What do I mean by balance sheet risk management? If you work, for example, in the treasury department or in the finance department or in risk, risk management or in internal audit or in compliance, you all have a, a first order concern with the balance sheet. And I think the BTRM is, is in, it covers all those spaces. So um, that was the first point to make it practical. Second point to make it user friendly. So we appreciate everyone has a day job. Uh, you know, I, we, <laughs> we will have day jobs here on the faculty. Uh, you guys out there will have day jobs. We have to make it user friendly. So of course, uh, if you can watch the lectures at your own time. The, the time required is, isn't um, inordinate. It's not undoable, but it requires application. There's a lot of material. If you look at the syllabus, which is on the, the, the brochure, the program brochure, you'll see that there's a lot of topics to cover because they're all relevant to balance sheet risk management. So there's a lot of material given your way, but one is given time to assimilate it. There's only one lecture a week. It's not like um, when I first started doing professional course a long time ago. I had hair on my head. Uh, at, I was doing the stock exchange exam um, in 1990, 91, and uh, you know, there were three evening classes a week. Try doing that. <laughs> um, but as a single man, you know, with no kids, possibly it's more doable. Uh, we only have one lecture a week, um, and there's five modules, 22 lectures. There is, some, there is an online test, but that's not part of your final mark. After 22 lectures and five online tests, because one test per module, five modules, after 22 lectures, you have the exam. Uh, sorry to interrupt, I just want to introduce a faculty member. Please come straight to me, Mr. Westcott. In case you thought the faculty was full of Americans, we have an English, we got an English fellow to join us, another close personal friend of mine of long-standing, Mr. Chris Westcott, who's about to join us, and I'll hand over the mic to him in a second. But uh, we've got uh, the 22 lectures, five online tests. They don't, part, they don't form part of your final assessment. The, the final assessment is the three-hour exam held in week 24. Traditional, longhand, sight unseen, written examination taken under exam conditions in your local uh, the domain. So if you're in London, it's in London. Uh, we, we, we've actually managed to accommodate all our students up to now. So by that, I mean we haven't had a student from such an esoteric location 
but there hasn't been an exam center in that person's location, okay? If it's a smaller country, it's usually your capital city. If it's a country like the U.S., trust me, it doesn't have to be Washington, D.C. We had a student who, was, who lived in Texas and was very near to Houston, and as it happens, there's a university there that could hold the exam. So that's where he took it. So um, although we arranged it, but I think he deferred it. <laughs> but anyway, you see my point. What I mean is the exam is taken in your local area, so there's no logistics problems as well. So um, that's pretty much the, the admin of it. Uh, one other thing I want to point out is the, the online forum. Uh, if you're in physically on, in class, then of course, it's easy to ask questions because you're here. When you're online, you can ask questions if you're watching live. However, if you're watching as a recording and you want an instant answer, <laughs> it's not possible. So we have the online forum and we guarantee that you'll get a response to anything posted on the online forum within 24 hours by a member of the faculty. That's either myself or someone else in the faculty that's more relevant to that person's uh, area of, of, of expertise. So the online forum is something that is designed to make the, the, the course real for people who aren't physically, you know, attending lectures in London. Uh, and we, we're, very, we're very keen. We, we emphasize the 24-hour response. You'll get a response within 24 hours. We've had, um, we've had some interesting use of the forum. Funnily enough, um, before I hand over to Mr. Westcott, interestingly enough, we, I am aware of some institutions that make participation in the online forum part of the final mark. Is anyone familiar with that? Some universities do this, whether you're doing a distance learning course or not. 10% of it, I'm familiar with, uh, the IFS University College has it, and one or two other universities do it as well. 10% of your final mark is dependent on how much use you made of the forum. Wow, <laughs> okay. <so. laughs> well, yes, you couldn't, if you posted a photograph of yourself on a night out, you probably don't get a mark for it. But that's a good point. It, it's used to the forum in a professional capacity. And uh, that kind of boosts, it encourages use of the forum. I'm, not, I'm having a think about that. We've not had it in, so far. I may or may not introduce for Cohort 3. I'd welcome some comments on it. Again, you can comment via direct to us. You have the organizer's email. You, uh, you can email us direct or you can post a comment on the LinkedIn group or you can email me direct. Any thoughts on that? At the moment, I wasn't going to do that, but at least it does encourage use of the forum. Right, um, only a few minutes for myself before I have to depart, but before I do, uh, Mr. Westcott, did you just want to say a few words from a personal perspective of what you think of BTRM and kind of what it's meant for you to be a faculty member? And I must ask you to speak up. You're a soft spoken fellow. You might must ask you to speak up. <laughs> We're not all as loud. <laughs> <laughs> I asked for that. <laughs> Okay, just, just a moment on who I am and where, where I come from. Uh, my name is Chris Westcott. Uh, I worked for RBS and NatWest for over 30 years, and for about 20 of those years, I was in the Treasury function. Um, there's a whole variety of roles, but uh, experience mainly on things like securitization, and uh, I was a division treasurer for a few years. And then my last job before I stopped for a rest was as Basel III Program Director for RBX Group. Um, now answering the question, <laughs> um, what has what it meant for me? Well, uh, depending on where you work, uh, I think having a full understanding end-to-end -end of all things Treasury is invaluable in a bank um, because Treasury starts at the top of the business and works its way down. Uh, and once you've picked up the, the variety of principles that the Treasury people will be talking about, you, you have a very useful toolkit with which to basically understand any Treasury risk type issue. And that's invaluable whether you're working with nitty gritty day to day or when you're in a separate function like credit or, uh, or you know, any function in the bank it helps you immeasurably just to have an understanding and almost a toolkit to attack any top-down problem. Um, I have in increasingly, uh, because Maura can't make every lecture, and, and picking up a, a range of uh, topics over the, uh, the various cohorts. Um, and I, I think as you know, certainly my approach on the, the topics is to start at the top, work down, sell the key principles, give as many examples as I can to try and make it real so that it, it, it's something that, that students can relate to, uh, and uh, try and keep the sessions interactive so it's not just one person just talking the whole time, 
there's a two-way flow, um, which hopefully makes it more interesting for students, especially uh, after, in many cases, the day's work. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. They're fa fantastic. Thanks very much for that. Thank you. Appreciate that. Yes. Uh, Chris and I were uh, colleagues at Royal Bank of Scotland and where he was a divisional treasurer. And it's interesting to see the different approaches of people on, for example, some of the group level committees. We were on group balance sheet management committee. And subsequent to that, I was on the group ALCO actually a few times. And um, Mr. Westcott's exactly right. It's uh, learning is, well, A, it's, it's a continuous process, but B, it needs to be two way. And I, I think that's, that, that's, for me, what I've observed from the fact all the faculty is that's how the lectures are conducted. So I'm very, very pleased to see that. Right. Uh, how are we doing for time? Any any questions from the room or from the phones, Mr. Kitsia? Nothing at all. No. OK. I mean, you've got some heavyweight talent here. and I exclude myself from that. So make use of that. Um, I myself have got to uh, push off. Uh, we've funnily enough, we've got to uh, the last lecture of cohort two this evening. So if anybody on the phones or in the rooms actually wants to sit in and observe that, it's being delivered by Mr. Westcott and there's a guest lecture from a lady called Patricia Robertson on compliance culture. She's the second part of it. Uh, that's, oh, I forgot to mention actually, we're very, we're quite keen on having guest lecturers in the BTRM who come along once in a while. Uh, we've had about seven or eight this cohort who aren't part of the faculty, they're industry practitioners, all, close personal friends of mine. <laughs> uh, they're all very well respected in the industry and they, they bring a good outside perspective. You know, not that the BTR and faculty is inside because they're all practitioners as well. Um, so practitioners with either practitioners or current academics who were practitioners. <laughs> so it's all that, that hands-on experience. So if anyone wants to stay on and watch that, you are, of course, very welcome. The lecture itself doesn't kick off till um, 5.45 UK time or be it British summer time. Right. Uh, in the absence of any further questions, I just want to thank the, my fellow faculty members, Chris Westcott, Peter Eisenhart, Ed Pace, thanks very much for coming along. Um, if, in the room, if you want to talk to them afterwards, of course, you're very welcome. And otherwise, um, have a good evening. Bernard, thank you.